We're here today at the old South Jacksonville Grammar School. Today, it's the Lofts in San Marco, but for many years, it served this community as an elementary school where kids would come to learn all the basics, simple things, things that we need to know just for getting along in society. You know, it makes me think of this great selling book, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten by Robert Fulgram. You know, this book has sold millions of copies based on just the simple idea that everything he needed to know, he learned in kindergarten. Things like put things back where you found them, wash your hands, flush the toilet, say you're sorry. Things that we all know that if we did and we live by those principles, the world would be a much better place. But long before Robert Fulgram wrote this book, Jesus taught some of these simple principles. In fact, this whole book is really based on the most basic principle Jesus taught, that we should do for others what we want them to do for us. You know, as Jesus taught us how to be human, he taught us the fundamentals of how to live with other humans. If you have a Bible, look with me at Luke chapter six, and, and you'll see some of these basic teachings. The first thing Jesus wanted us to know was this idea that you are who you follow. Listen to what Jesus said. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone when he is fully trained will be like his teacher. Jesus is giving this simple but not easy idea that you are becoming who you are following. It matters. It matters what people think and how they act and how they treat other people. Who is influencing us? We are told this as kids, but maybe we don't really live it out as adults. We, we follow all kinds of ideas and principles and, and we follow all kinds, of, all kinds of worldviews just that we get in media and social media, which is fine, but are you conscious of who you're following? Because you are becoming, you are being shaped into something and it's determined by who you're following. The second thing Jesus taught us in this is that we tend to judge in others what we are most afraid of in ourselves. Listen to what he said in verse 41. And why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself all the time do not see the log that's in your eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck that is in your brother's eye. Now, this is one of those teachings that really is found throughout the Bible. Jesus is giving a, a really ridiculous demonstration, but it's so poignant that we tend to pick up those little things in other people that are actually big issues in our own heart. We tend to be uh, critical of others. Uh, if, we are, if we're consumed with our own image, we tend to be C uh, critical of other people's image. If we're consumed with our own wealth or money, we tend to be critical of other people in, in terms of their wealth and, and their money. Jesus' idea is this, you are looking at specks in their eyes, but you have a log in your own eye. You know, wouldn't the world be a better place if we all dealt with the log that's in our eye? And then maybe we'd see clearly enough to truly be helpers to other people. The next basic thing that Jesus taught was this idea that you harvest what you plant. Listen to what he said. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasured up in his heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasured produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. I don't know if you're like me, but it, there've been many times where I think to myself, did, did I just say that out loud? I, where did that come from? But the truth is, Jesus knows where it came from, and, and so do we. It comes from our hearts. You know, as we think, so we speak. And so Jesus is saying, be very careful about what you put in, what you take into your mind, into your heart, into your soul, into your spirit, because those things inevitably come out of us. We harvest what we plant. Let me ask you, what are you planting? Are you spending time in the basic teachings and the example of Jesus? Or are you more influenced by social media or by whatever the latest thing is on, on Netflix or what you're reading in, in some publication? You know, Jesus is inviting us to plant deeply inside of us his word, the best way to live, the best way to be human. And finally, Jesus teaches us this simple idea that the durability of our lives depends on the foundation upon which we build. Listen to what he said in verse 46. And why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. 
He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the streams broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the streams broke against it, immediately it fell and it ruined the house. Listen, Jesus is teaching such a simple but profound principle. He's saying, what are you building your life on? Who, who are you following? What are you judging in other people? What are you planting? And what kind of foundation have you laid? You know, it's really interesting to me that this school has been here for so long. It has weathered so many storms. Hurricanes have come. All kinds of things have happened and it has stood. Why? Well, clearly it's got a solid foundation. And Jesus is using that example for our life. The durability of your life depends on the foundation you lay. You know, I love what Jesus said because the truth is the storm came to both houses. Both builders experienced the flood. The builder who built on a solid foundation and the builder who didn't take the time to lay the foundation. The storm was the same for both. You know, that's true in our lives as well. Jesus said in another place that God causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust and the sun rises on the evil and the good. Circumstances of life are gonna happen to all of us. The question is, how do we endure the storm? How do we endure the flood? We do it by building our lives on the foundation of Jesus and his teachings. Listen, I don't know what storm you're going through or what you've just been through, but I know another storm is coming. And the question, so simple, but not easy. A question that really comes back to some basics that you could explain to a child, but spend your lifetime trying to live out. Who are you following? Are you following Jesus? Who are you judging? And what is that telling you about what's going on in your own heart? What are you planting? How is what you're harvesting in your life a result of what you've been planting? And are you ready to face the storms that will inevitably come? Have you built your life on the foundation of Jesus? These are simple teachings of the best way to be human, but they're not easy. We invite you to come, be a part of Southside. We're in community. We're learning how to live this life out together. We're learning how to be human together by following the example of Jesus. We'd love to have you come be a part, either online or on campus. I pray that this week, you are following Jesus and that you live a life full and abundant in His grace and peace.